to the channel. Today on Cafe Thursday, we're going to make instant pot arroz con garbanzos y pollo or rice with chickpeas and chicken. So here is our recipe. Two tablespoons of olive oil, one and a half pound chicken breast, skinless and boneless cu cubed, one pack of sazón goya, a cup of sofrito, four ounces of tomato sauce, a half cup of pimento stuffed green olives and capers, and two cups of rice. So let's get started. First, we are going to coat the cubed skinless boneless breast meat with a packet of sassoni. You really want to rub it in there really, really well. And then we are going to put it in a bowl that we can refrigerate and we're going to top that with just a little vinegar to let it marinate. You want to set this in your fridge so you want to prep this at least two to three hours before we're getting ready to cook. Now we're going to use our instant pot because it's quick, it's fast, it can be all done in one pot, it cuts out the mess, cuts out the heat. So we're going to start by put, placing saute on and we're going to let our saute get nice and hot because we're going to cook this chicken in there and we are going to make sure that we add the olive oil to the pot so that it can get nice and hot. You want to make sure you drain all of the vinegar out of the meat so that the meat is nice and dry so that it doesn't pop and go crazy. And now we're just going to lay the chicken in there and you want to make sure you don't overcrowd it. So make sure that you just have the one flat layer of meat so that it gets cooked evenly and thoroughly because again with poultry you don't want to mess around. You need it to be cooked even and thorough. I found that because it was a pound and a half and that did make a lot of chicken that I had to do it twice. So I had to do two rounds of chicken in there, but I did to make sure that it was never overcrowded and that it did cook very nice and even. Now this recipe is a really great family style recipe, meaning it's going to feed probably four to six people because those two cups of rice are going to make you at least four cups once it's cooked. Now you want to make sure that you can see my bottom is clear. You want to get all that brown goodness, the sazon, the seasoning of the meat. You want to scrape it really good. Now we're going to add in our homemade sofrito, which I gave you the recipe to last week. We're going to add that in and the smell is just, at this point, oh my gosh, it is wonderful. The smell of all that garlic, green pepper, onions, uh, racao, uh, cilantro, the smell is just amazing. So we want to get that to just marry with the meat. We're going to add our four ounces of tomato sauce in there. and We just want to stir that up and really coat that chicken. We want to get that sazon and that tomato sauce all in there so you're building a really good base for your rice. Now before when we showed the garbanzos they were in a can but I've separated it now because the garbanzos drained are in one area and then we'll need that water. So you're going to add in your olives and capers mix and you can put just really as many olives and capers as you like. If you like more add a little more. You can't go wrong with it. So now that it, that's all simmered and good, we're going to cut off the saute. And then we're going to add in, like I said, the rice, which is two cups. Stir that all in. And then like you see, my garbanzos are separate, but I kept and reserved the water that it came in and added another uh, bit of water until it made a full can. Now for this recipe, you're going to need another half can of water. So we're just going to put a little less actually than a half can, a little bit more water in there. So it's a whole can of the water that the beans came in plus additional water and then about a third of a can more of water. And now we can throw in those garbanzo beans which we had separated so that we could fill the can properly with water. We're going to add our packet of sazon because with our red rice we definitely want that sazon seasoning and you want to just mix this all really well get your rice your beans all those flavors to really join in and marry we're going to cover that 
Make sure your lid is in locked position, closed. And always make sure that the top is on sealing, not venting, so that you can get the pressure cooking to start. So now we're ready. We are going to hit pressure cook and we're gonna put the timer on 18 minutes. So you're gonna hit that plus until you get 18 minutes and we're gonna let that cook. Now when your time is up, you're gonna release that latch. It's gonna have some really hot steam, so you just have to really be careful that you do not get burned. A lot of people can get second and third degree burns because as you can see that steam popping up, it's releasing a lot of pressure. So to add to this, we're gonna make plantains, so platanos, platano maduros, and we're going, to, we've already peeled the plant, plantain, cut them into inch circles, and we're gonna slightly brown them on each side before we take them out for smashing. So I already have a plate set up with a piece of paper towel on that because while these are frying on each side, you want to make sure that you have the paper towel ready so that you can drain them. You don't wanna cook cook them at this point. You're just getting them a nice little brown on them. Now we're gonna take them off and put them on that paper towel that I told you about. You do want to double fry them. So that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're beginning the frying process. Then we're going to smash them. So we're going to use my smasher. And we are going to smash the plantains with just slight pressure. Because these are maduros, meaning they're very ripe. So you don't want to push really hard or you will really smash and just destroy the integrity of the plantain. And that's when you get a mess. But if you just put a little pressure, you have to put a lot more pressure with the green, but these are already ripe. So we're just putting a little pressure and you see they come out just perfect. And when we have those all done, we go back to the oil, which has maintained its heat, and we're going to finish frying them brown on each side. And don't turn them until they are ready, meaning nice and brown and crisp the way you like them. Some people like them a little bit more fried, some people don't, but that one right there, that is a perfect brown. That is when I know that it's ready. And let me tell you, ugh, with that rice cooking and this frying, ugh, look at that. The finished product sprinkled with just a little sea salt and a little garlic powder. And then we see it's completely vented, all our steam is out. The button has dropped, because when that pin has dropped, you know it's safe and it's ready to open. Let's see how that rice turned out. Man, if you guys could just smell this. Oh, this kitchen smells delicious. And remember, we did this dinner for about four to six people for only $8.10 total. So you just cannot beat life out here in the Caribbean. And this is why we moved, and you're thinking about moving to the DR. So as always, make sure to hit that subscriptions, hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell, give this and all videos a thumbs up. All information is underneath the videos, and we'll see you on the next Cafe Thursday.